Hey guys, what's going on? Jason with JW Classic VW, and welcome back to the vlog. If you guys are new here, thanks for checking me out. And if you like what you're watching, and you get about halfway through the video, <laughs> don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. All right, guys. So, JW Classic VW. We're about to do the install on the uh, Mendola, I think that's right. Sorry if I'm saying that wrong. Uh, trans support that you install at the nose of your transmission to help keep it from kind of like jostling or bouncing whenever you have like harder takeoffs. You know, first, second gear, you're just really getting onto it, which with Goose, <laughs> the 2276, I get onto her hmm, probably quite a bit, quite a bit. And then we're doing the Kaffir bar install. This is going to be part one of that Kaffir bar install because there's some things I think you guys want to know when it comes to installing this if you plan on doing it. Outstanding piece of craftsmanship when it comes to the design of this uh, Kaffir bar, but I think it was more designed for race car applications, which I guess Goose is kind of turning into a race car. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a little bit. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. So, if you plan on installing this thing on your stock setup, which Goose is pretty much stock setup, there's some things you're going to have to do, some minor modifications, and there's some things that I did, you know, on my part, because, you know, just the way I was installing it. Like with most things Volkswagen aftermarket, you might have to do some modifications. So stay tuned. You're going to like this because there's some things we get to do. I get to weld a little bit. Yeah, weld. <laughs> All right, guys, let's get to it. All right, guys, here we are. This is the uh, Kaffir Bar System by Cool Ride Customs. If you're interested in taking a look at it or possibly getting one of them, check out the description below. I will have details in there. It's pretty cool the way that it is set up and the way that it works. Unlike some of the other Kaffir Bar systems that are available out there, mostly the, uh, the black one that I've seen from MP that I'm sure you guys know about, uh, it only has two support locations. You got to cross the shock towers and then straight down to the the transmission itself. This one goes to the to the transmission front and to the back area of the transmission. So you got total triangulation or uh, three positions of contact. So that makes it pretty cool. The uh, the way it came or the way that it's designed is pretty cool. You've got uh, left hand and right hand threads. These are all left hand threads. It's you know that's what they say on the left hand. I assume that means left hand threads. Let's go ahead and check it out here. You're going to put one left hand and one right hand thread on, on each one of these uh, these struts. I just got to find which one's which. Okay, there we go. So there's the right hand one. And I'm going to go ahead and take these in, but let's not forget the... Oh, wow, that's pretty good. Threads in pretty easy. Let me bring you guys down here a little bit so you can see better. I need to add a little lock nut on here. Or else you're just wasting time, dude. So you'll run these down, and then once you get them kind of in position, you'll take the bar and move it out or in to tighten up the strut. I'm going to go ahead and install these on all these. You guys don't need to watch that. So right now, get to enjoy some time-lapse activity. All right, there's that left hand thread. Let's get this right hand thread on here. You think I should just run this through just to do it? Yeah, why not?
thing going over, of course. Uh, everything is, moves really well. It's uh, definitely a beefy option, and I can't wait to get in the car. So let's go ahead and get a turn goose around and get uh, the rear tires off and uh, get to work, guys. See you in a minute. All right, guys. So pretty much what we're doing is this is the nose cone right here on, on the transmission. And we're going to be taking the hardware off here and seeing if we'll end up having to do a double nut situation to back out these threads a little bit. And then if so, what we're going to have to do is maybe run a longer stud in here to be able to support the bracket, the, uh, the support bracket here. So first things first is we're going to have to get this ground strip out of the way. And this is a 13 mil on the nose cone. So we'll go ahead and loosen this up and then see what we got. See what we got. These four, one, two, three, four have to be uh, either moved out and or uh, um, extended, uh, moved out, extended, whatever. So we're going to see if we can do the double nut to back them out some. I'm not sure how much threads are actually on these bad boys, but we will see. All right. And that is the basic idea. Man, that thing slides right in there. Like, no problems. Definitely gonna need some more threads though. So we'll go ahead and try the, the double nut and see if we can back these threads out a little bit. Well, that wasn't so bad. I don't know how long these are though, you know what I mean? How long these studs are. That's pretty long. It's pretty long. I'm gonna go see what I get. It's pretty long though. It goes all the way through. Yeah, so yeah, it was it was all the way through to there. Let's see what I got. Very bad guys. Okay guys, so I found two longer studs. I'm gonna back these two out a few threads and then these two I'm gonna replace with the two that I found are longer. I got them out of a 40 horsepower engine that I have or a 40 horse block that I have. So yeah, that's what we're doing.
Well, they're all on there pretty tight. Even though the top two, I really need to come back with uh, longer studs. This one's not so bad. This one, I can back it out a little. But uh, these bottom two are definitely holding her in there, no problem. So, yeah, man. That thing fit on there great. It's definitely going to provide a little bit of, a little bit of that uh, bounce. Actually, it'll probably stop it from bouncing completely. That's pretty awesome. Good stuff. Good stuff. Good stuff. Hey guys, what's going on? So, there was a little bit of modification that I had to do to the brackets that uh, came with the uh, air cooled, not air cooled, dang it, cool ride customs kit. The uh, first off is I I went ahead and welded the backside with my. Uh, my flux core welder you see when it comes it's not welded on the back side and uh, i didn't like that very much so it is welded on the front and i'm sure that's more than enough to hold it for what you want to do plus i had to custom it you know i had to, I had to notch it at the top to be able to get it to work with the stock setup on the car because i didn't want to cut i wanted to cut goose so i had to cut these brackets and uh i'm gonna have to repaint them so yeah that's not going in today. I'm gonna have to go ahead and, and uh, finish up modifying the other side. And uh, I'll show you guys exactly what I did here in a little bit, which it's pretty obvious, right? Cut the notch in there and then uh, welding the backside. And then I'll go ahead and prime these up and paint them. And uh, I'll probably just do black to match the, match the, the car a little bit better. And then uh, put it back together, yeah. So what do we got here, huh, guys? Well, first off, it's Sunday morning, so good morning. I went ahead and ordered the uh, the billet caps for my uh, disc brakes, bad brakes, because the ones that I have, hold on a second, where are they at? Uh, oh. These ones, these aftermarket ones that you can buy, they don't work. So I had to go ahead and get these ones, which uh, will work a lot better. <laughs> They kept falling off. I kept hearing this clink, 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 clink sound, and that's what it was. It was these suckers bouncing around inside there. These ones are really cool and well made. They are from uh, air cooled. Air cooled. Pete over there at air cooled sent me some stickers too. So I got a sticker to put on the board for Pete. Actually, got a couple. Got the bad brake system, and this one I will send out in the sticker drawing. But uh, these two we got to put on the board. So we'll go ahead and stick these on the board. With the other stuff so let's go over to the board and take a look at uh, where these stickers are gonna go Ooh, the board's filling up yeah da -da -da. yeah that's a good spot cool air cooled army is on the board sweet okay so here we go here are the shock tower um ears and let me talk to you guys about this for a second the, uh, the way that these are, the way that they come, I had to notch these so that I could go ahead and fit them to the top of the shock towers uh, because if 
if you want to drill out, I guess that area you can if you want to, but uh, I didn't want to do that. So what I ended up doing was uh, notching them. I went ahead and uh, welded the back side, the back side of these brackets, and then uh, primed and painted them. And it, they turned out really good. And I'm gonna go ahead and paint the rest of these black to match these as well, so. If you look here, the way this is supposed to come through, it needs to, this, the nut will come off of there and then this will just thread right on. But with the hole here, you'd had to open this up on my car, which I'm not cutting my body to get this through. So now that I've notched it, it'll fit through the way that I want it to. Plus you can see that, uh, focus. You can see that I added some extra weld to the top too and then ground it down. But the, uh, the weld to the bottom side, yeah, it's not super pretty, but it's getting the job done. So I checked out some of the, uh, the info on, on Cool Ride's website and I could see that they mounted these ears to the back side of the frame horn. So like it goes around to the back side here. So I'd have to take both of these off. And I'm guessing like right now I have it supported with my jack, the weight of the engine and, and the transmission. So my guess is, is that I can take these off and well, I got the brainy idea of like, oh no, this should be on the front side. But then I ran into some interference issues like right in here. Let me take you to the top, show you what I'm talking about. <laughs> Some interference issues right there because guess what my my uh, joint isn't gonna fit there right smart guy with uh, that being in the way so yeah my bad just trying to do my own thing and well didn't work out not without notching that out which I'm not at the point yet where I've decided if I'm gonna have to do that or not because there is like another support that you can buy for the transmission that is a solid a solid uh, support for the bottom of the transmission that removes these bushings, these bushings right here, these yellow ones from uh, from Rancho, and uh, then this becomes a solid mount. And I'm not sure if this would be the same issue there, but I'm gonna go ahead and take this off both sides. I'm gonna sand these down, and I'm gonna paint this again. But I'm gonna I have to paint these still, but I'm not gonna paint them until I know <laughs> that I know it's gonna work. You know what I mean? So I'm gonna take this one to the back side and then see what kind of clearance I have. I do think that I'm going to have to put the joint, a little little heim joint, that's not really a heim joint, but the little joint right here. I'm probably gonna have to put that on first and then thread on the actual rod after I get it on just because I know the clearance is gonna be tight back here. So that's where we are right now. And back out, man. Oh yeah, that thing works great. I could already tell that the uh transmission was like shifting you know when you got a i got a stage two kennedy clutch in here for my 2276 and when you've got that bigger engine you you can tell right away when it starts to catch and it's kind of like jostling your transmission well that's gone dude that thing works great so like launches or harder launches this is going to save your no nose cone for sure so yeah totally digging that and man it looks good that thing looks sexy up underneath here not that anybody ever sees what's going on underneath the the, the car but you know as you can tell, Goose is pretty darn clean underneath here. I'm going to make some caps eventually to cap that off. But uh, yeah, she's pretty clean normally. This is this is all pretty dirty right now because I've just, you know, been driving a lot. But uh, yeah, that's where we are right now, guys. So first thing I'm going to be doing, well, not first thing, but the next thing I'm going to be doing is just removing both sides of the uh, the, the front of the uh, frame horns here and uh, and moving this, this uh, ear to the inside to see what kind of clearance I have and if that's what the... Uh, where it needs to be because I'm pretty sure that's where it needs to be. All right, guys, I'll see you in a minute. So I'm going to tell you, <laughs> if we're laying on the ground here, you know, we've been working hard on something and you just want to lay here for a little bit and just kind of like look at it because not only do you want to just look at it, but you're worn, worn out. <laughs> I'm worn out, man. This thing has been kicking my butt and it's just because, of course, modification is required but a lot of that's probably because of me <laughs> you guys will see if you ever get one of these these capper bar setups from cool rides that uh you might have some modifications to do yourself i still like the kit i really do there's not anything else out there like it so you know it's a starting point and it's not super expensive you know i'm not paying 500 bucks for this thing so if I were, I would expect it to fit perfectly, but it's it's uh, 
it's 200 I think 260 bucks and it's it's awesome the way that I have it set up now it's gonna give me adjustability and be able to play with it some more but uh, yeah overall still I give it a thumbs up so guys turn you back around show you again real quick there we go from the the horn this ear I had to bend the ear too to get it to angle right just bent it a little bit shaved it here so I'll probably shave it a little bit more because you know when you paint it it's gonna gain a little bit of a little bit of a extra layer and why paint it if it's just gonna get rubbed right off again but uh, the this is probably something that you want to do like if you order this kit and you have your engine out you're probably gonna be a-okay <laughs> but I just don't like the idea of putting this ear on the other side of the horn because I feel like it would just add, you know, it pushed the engine out some too, you know what I mean? And like our tins aren't already a pain in the butt to get in. All right. You can see that I probably took off more than I needed to up top here, but no worries. I didn't go nowhere. Very cool. Very cool. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. You guys saw what had to go down to get this thing to work, right? Well, get it to work in the stock type application, right? So that's going to be it for today, guys. That is going to be it for today. That's going to be it for when it comes to part one of the Capra Bar install and that... Uh, the uh, Mandola Trans Support, which that thing's awesome. I could tell almost instantly the difference that that thing made when it came to the actual drivability and how it's, you know, the shock. Before I before I installed this first second gear, when I was getting onto it, I could, I could kind of feel how that power was transitioning through the transmission. When I added this support, and it's not very expensive. And check it out, guys. It's uh, definitely worth it. If you, uh, if you have a high-powered engine to install this, because it's going to save wear and tear on your, your drivetrain altogether. And it, it's quick and easy install. Other than the extended uh, hardware you need to install, I got two that you saw. I got two that I got I to gotta take out of there and replace at some point, but that's not going to be a big deal at all. I pulled two <laughs> out of my 40-horse 40 40 horse power engine that were perfect in length. I, I uh, don't have an extra engine block lying around, so... I'm going to find those somewhere, but thanks for tuning in, guys. Make sure you are watching for the part two to come out because we're going to finish this Kaffir Bar install up and then take Goose out, run her around, and do some adjustments to figure out how we got to get this thing dialed in to get the best kind of like feel, All right? Thanks, guys. Thanks to all my subscribers, all my new ones, all my guys that have been here forever supporting the channel. You guys are awesome. And to all my hecklers out there, all the naysayers, I love you guys, man. <laughs> See you guys in the next one. This is Jason with JW Classic VW, and I'm out.